In this video I'll talk about two different types of prediction, interpolation and extrapolation. Interpolation refers to predicting the value of the dependent variable y for the values of the independent variable x within the range of the measured data. When people, especially in computer science and computer graphics, talk about interpolation, they often mean constructing functions which smoothly join a discrete set of data points. Words you might hear in this context are things like splines and kriging. That's not what we'll mean, though some of these ideas can actually be used in data analysis. We're imagining the case where we have messy experimental data and we have some theoretically justified function which describes that data, and we use it to predict values between the minimum and maximum of the measured data points. To interpolate, we simply substitute the value of the independent variable where we want prediction into the model function. As long as the data has not been underfit, interpolation should produce reasonable results. Extrapolation refers to making predictions outside the range of the measured data. Again, in practice, all we do is plug the value where we want the prediction into the model we have fit. Compared to interpolation, extrapolation is often more useful. We're predicting the future rather than the past. However, it's also more error prone and difficult to do rigorously because when we go outside the range of our observed data, we have fewer constraints. Within the range, the model function has to stay close to the observed data, so it's hard to be spectacularly wrong when interpolating. This is not the case when extrapolating. The quality of an extrapolation depends crucially on having the right model, having accurate measurements, and not extrapolating too far into the future. If these conditions are not met, then disaster results. This is a real example of a series of extrapolations on economic growth from the Office of Budget Responsibility in the UK. It's a little bit of a messy graph, but we'll go through it carefully. The dashed lines are extrapolations that hugely overestimate economic growth. There are several issues going on here. The main two are extrapolating too far ahead on the basis of too few data points and using the wrong models. We can see the first problem in the 2010 extrapolation, which was produced on the basis of only two years of data. There is a linear trend evident, however, there's simply not enough observations on which to base extrapolations out to the year 2015. The second problem can be seen in the 2013 prediction. This is the green line. There's more data here, but it seems like some sort of exponential or linear function has been fit, neither of which describe the observed data at all. In fact, the productivity was decreasing between 2011 and 2013, yet a sharp turnaround and subsequent linear growth was predicted. The actual data in dark blue shows a dip from 2008 to 2010, and then very slow growth after 2011. This is a case of applying models which are motivated by blind optimism, bad theory or politics to try to get the data to show something that isn't there, in this case strong economic growth. Here, the simple linear fit of all the data, that is the dotted black line, does probably the best job of describing the trend over the time period for which data exist. This is an example of a good extrapolation. The data up to 2019 is the global population, at that point around 7.7 .7 billion. Over the last 300 years, global population has grown exponentially, with the growth rate accelerating in the early 20th century and peaking around 1960, which is what the pink line shows. A naive extrapolation of the historical trend in total population would predict a continued exponential growth in a population of many tens of billions by 2100. However, we note the population growth rate has been decreasing over the past 60 years. Trends in demographics show that as countries develop, particularly when women have access to education, financial independence and control over their reproductive rights, population growth slows considerably, and in many developed countries like Germany and Japan, the birth rate is lower than the death rate, so that the population is stable or even decreasing. As other countries develop, they are expected to follow similar trajectories, and the population is expected to stop growing exponentially over the next 30 to 50 years. This is an excellent example of modelling in action, where both data and detailed subject-specific knowledge are applied to make accurate predictions.